Near the Wild with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Hello? Matt Becker. Matt Becker. I can see you guys. Sorry, I had to turn off the slingshot guy. The what? <laughs> the slingshot guy. John's a He's the best. For how to lose a losing. Losing. Hold on a second. John, are you, are you with Becker at the bus? Nope. Oh. It's not like you guys are laughing at the same thing you were both looking at. Well, I, I sent him the link oh, okay. to uh, to <laughs> your your spriff. Young skunk. He's German, and he apparently has uh, restraining orders. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I see the link, yeah. Brett. <laughs> I, I'll just be in the dark on this. He's not it's allowed fine. to buy a gun, so he makes his own. He's fucking nuts is what he is. Just, maybe we can make uh, circular saw blades fly. <laughs> So th- this is a, a video that John found and sent to you, Becker, right? Yeah, when well, he's right. not watching dolphin porn, he sends yeah. this. <laughs> Which is rare. Hey, Brett Erickson's with us today. Hi, guys. Hey, Brett. Hi, guys. Hey. You that? are the guy who saved that podcast. Good job. Totally, man. <laughs> now you're just swooping in to save this one. Oh, I do what I can. It's so much easier <laughs> than having your own podcast. <laughs> You know, it's just nice to have a guy who doesn't eat meat right before a show. <laughs> I thought it was live. Something in my head said it was live. And then, of course, I would have missed it. Thank God. So yeah. then I whipped on. Like, what the fuck? I was live. And I went, like, no, it wasn't live. Why don't you do a live one and just charge like five bucks? Yeah. Pay per view. There's, well, there's a lot of issues with that. It's the uh, it's the uh, buyer's remorse clause, I think. <laughs> find, out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> find out nobody will pay five bucks. Yeah. No. <laughs> dealing with re- oh, he- that's a bad. In the ass. Brett said buyers are Morris and Becker just immediately thought, oh, the customer was would feel like they could they want their <laughs> money back. No, it'd be it would probably be the buyers remorse closet, Doug has with this, the podcast is that uh you have twenty four hours to uh have me go in and remove anything to scrub anything that you yeah. want to when out. you decide that pro rape position you took forty five <laughs> minutes into the podcast after it's your fourth like- shot, maybe rethinking that. True it's story, like- true story. <laughs> yeah, but it's like when they move a fight to another country where they have no rules. It's like, oh, I guess you're going to be fighting your prize fight in Cambodia. So you might want to work on your feet footwork. Yeah. Do we have that buyer's remorse clause? Because uh, I am not having a lot of luck finding a job. And I think uh, this podcast might be the problem. I, I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, yeah. things were going so smoothly over there at PBS. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> one day they're like, hey, I heard you have a podcast. Next day it's like, hey, we got to let you go. <laughs> I, I probably could have uh, I could have held back from asking you. Hey, are you uh, dialing in from work today, or what's going on? <laughs> I could have took that, that out. Technically, you are, John. <laughs> technically, technically, this was a uh, public broadcasting production for a while. Yeah, we got some federal Just, funding, but that all stopped when you got fired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Trump. <laughs> yeah, you can get a job in a coal mine, is my understanding. <laughs> in this new America. <laughs> Coming to you live from West Virginia, near the wild. <laughs> I say we become freelance loggers, John. Let's just go out and cut down trees. <laughs> Is that how that works? I think you can just cut them down. And once they're cut down, it's like, what do you want me to replant it? That's stupid. <laughs> the wood goes bad. Uh, one the wood goes bad. <laughs> years ago, uh, when I was in college, we decided, me and my roommates decided we really wanted a Christmas tree. So we went out and cut down a tree because this is Alaska. So we went behind uh, uh, the hospital, Providence Hospital, and cut down a tree uh, and learned later that that is illegal. You can't just go anywhere you want in Anchorage and cut down a tree. Yeah, yeah uh, so Providence is in, like, it's in Anchorage proper. You're you're going on someone's property and cutting down a tree. Yeah, but this is Alaska. It's <laughs> funny, <laughs> similar story, John, as uh, we wanted a big cross for our yard, so we went to a church. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you're not allowed to do that either. Yeah, if you cut that cross, it goes it goes bad too. You got to harvest it. Well, God may not have been watching us. That camera on the outside of the building was. <laughs> <laughs> and you tried you tried to explain we're not going to set it on fire. We're just want the cross. Well, not till winter. Yeah, not till you need <laughs> to. <laughs> so, what's going on over there? We're uh, having one of those intermittent days where it's like sunny and then it gets cloudy. When it's cloudy, it's, it feels very cold out. And then when it gets sunny, it feels like summer. And then you just 
Like half shirt day. I think you just explained like in a very remedial way, the way the sun works. <laughs> <laughs> when it's not Wait, there, I, I tend to shiver. Sun hot. When I see it, I must How remove you- my bare skin. How did you finish that, Becker? You're wearing a half shirt? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> half the time I have a shirt and half the time I don't. What do you think, it's weirdo? Oh, I thought you were wearing like a crop top. Yeah, yeah, and a ball gag. What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could always do the, that uh, that uh, Costa Rican thing, the Tico thing, where you just kind of take the bottom of your T-shirt and start rolling it up until it, it, it stops and it stays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a, a Tico that is a top. weird look. Yeah, Tico tube tops. <laughs> well, that's that's. Uh, I'm glad you guys are finally out of the snow. And uh, well, I think it sounded like you were, but uh, you guys have been battling it. That and uh, keeping the streets clear out in Anchorage. Yeah, they. Uh, you know, my neighbors, because uh, you know how they do street cleaning, Greg. Where they come through like once a year because you pay taxes. Yeah. And uh, Whether they came you need through it or not. <laughs> Yeah, and our neighbors had had a big barbecue, and they don't have a driveway because they don't have a driveway. And so all their friends left their cars on the goddamn street the one day they're cleaning the (laughs) fucking street. So when they all leave, now our house had all this shit still piled up, leaves and crap. But not only that, but all the ones that got cleaned, the water ran down and drug everything left down in front of our house. So I was livid this morning. I look outside, street cleaners came through. Cleaned our street, just our our little area. Guy did, waves at me, I wave at him. It was a, it was amazing. Did they bill you for all the garbage out in front of your house? I don't know. I'm <laughs> sure they already got the money. But the point was, it was <laughs> like like rarely with utility or anybody. You just you get that like connection. I'm looking at my window. He's waving at me like it's a Disney movie. I'm yeah. like, thanks, big guy. It's nice. You can fight City Hall. Yeah, and he drives on the other side of the vehicle. I didn't notice that until he waved at me. Yeah, they gotta, want, be, they gotta be curbside. Yeah, curb service. I mean, curb uh, driver. Yeah, like a postal, yeah. like a postal van. Yeah. Well, they probably gave the job to some guy from the UK. That's why he's smiling because <laughs> he's showing off his new teeth thanks to Obamacare. <laughs> Immigrants. <laughs> it goes Man, down, it goes could down. you imagine being being killed at a concert that you would never admit you went to? <laughs> 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 like, there's a double tragedy here somewhere. It's tough to prove you weren't there when. Uh, that's there's a toe tag yeah yeah how'd you get that broken leg i went there to help (laughs) (laughs) it was at the end of the show i was helping (laughs) catering Hmm. uh yeah i watched a bunch of videos on that and they all end with uh ariana grande is okay yeah i thought that was amazing that she's okay (laughs) john uh, you're you're the youngest here so uh who's this ariana grande um, I think she's like a, she's like a 22 year old that looks like a 12 year old that, uh, go on <laughs> to catch a predator. <laughs> yeah, that's attention. Uh, she's got some, she's got songs. I don't know. I can't name any of them. It's basically, yeah. She's basically Justin Bieber without a mustache. She's a pop star. Well, isn't Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber without a mustache? <laughs> no, that's true. I forgot. But anyway, the so point are is. are twins. Is that-, is that what you're saying? They're identical twins? Ariana Grande <laughs> and Justin Bieber are twins. There's two things. that they, The UK might not let American entertainers go over there and perform anymore if they're going to attract that kind of attention. But the number two is, is I think the Muslims like her because they waited until the end of the show to do it. <laughs> They're like, hang on, let's wait for the encore. No, you're supposed to blow up at the half. <laughs> this is my song. My jam. I can get her now. She's dreamy. But it, it would be one of those things where maybe he was waiting for the perfect song <laughs> to do it. And, it, it, and it, you know, happens. it's always the hits, the encore. That's the one that comes mm-hmm. out. Yeah. So I, yeah. So it was really he was he was pulling the strings the whole the whole time. Ah, uh, cover a Chumbawamba. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm not going out on that one. <laughs> I get blown oh. up. I get back. <laughs> uh, wasn't isn't Mishka in the UK right now? Yeah, Mishka Shubali. Yeah, yeah. Could it be that this has nothing to do with uh, radical Islamic terrorism and more to do with someone who's just really depressed after having seen Mishka Shubali's act? <laughs> We're not ruling any theories out. It's so fresh. It's so fresh. 
He separates suicide and bombing. <laughs> I, was, it, uh, was it a suicide bombing? Yes, uh, yes, John. That's what happens when you blow yourself up. No, yeah, they, they already, I thought they arrested. Were I thought they were looking for somebody though? So they, they got the guy who dropped them off. <laughs> Way to go, Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Is Uber now an accomplice? I, I heard a, an expert in uh, in, uh, ter- in Islamic terrorism or a terrorism that uh, features suicide bombers. I don't know if that's all terrorism. They said that uh, the one the one thing that is like clear is when it's a suicide bombing, you can tell by the way that the body parts have separated and landed in different areas. So uh, yeah, the, cool. That guy uh, that guy's <laughs> not being um, detained. <laughs> He's being bagged. Gotcha, mm. and that's and that's what that's what they they found there. So, yeah, I, did, I, did they already come up with the guy they detained? Is it someone who, they got the guy detained? They won't say who he is. We're actually getting into actual facts here, so we should really kind of steer away from this. That's that's really not. <laughs> no, you, you think let's listeners listeners to this podcast are concerned with facts? No, we're not. He was homegrown. <laughs> he was a homegrown terrorist. This is the problem you're going to have when you let foreigners in your country and live there long enough to have children who later become terrorists <laughs> let's get let's let's dig deep let's get some uh sean hannity level uh exploration on this topic that was pretty Hillary. close right there oh. well the, the point is is you got one less viewer to soccer marmalade <laughs> <laughs> that's a shame because we were one listener away from bringing it back <laughs> It's uh, it's being it's, <laughs> it's being retooled. Yeah, yeah. And, and done so by people, someone else. People, people still play soccer, right? Uh, I've heard. I'm not sure why, but yeah, I've heard they do. I, I, I think you need a girl on it who yeah. doesn't know the sport. I thought Hannigan would qualify, but <laughs> <laughs> Soccer Marmalade was a podcast that Brett Erickson and. Uh, What's the best way to describe Hennigan? Is it Brian Hennigan or Mr. Hennigan, the uncut Scotsman? Neighbor. Yeah, neighbor. Upstairs neighbor. Oh, yeah, it's upstairs neighbor. Hennigan. Uh, yeah, they uh, they did eight of them? Thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Look at you. Double digits. Yeah, it was good. Are the archives still available? Um, I don't know. Talk to, talk to Shaley about it. I don't know. I, don't... <laughs> I can't even. It was so long ago, I can't remember where we were putting them. Oh yeah, yeah, they're available. They're available. Sure. I'll put a link. I'll put a link. They're interesting. Yeah, if you want to hear about soccer two years ago. Two years ago. That's the podcast. Same rules. For you. Same rules you today. <laughs> well, I'm a couple I'm a couple seasons behind, so it's perfect. <laughs> it would be the same no matter when you listen to it, John. Perfect. <laughs> so Brett Erickson, what are you up to? What are you doing? Ah, uh, about five eleven. <laughs> it's a comedy <laughs> piece. Uh, I uh, just uh, been living in uh, the old uh, Los Angeles. Got a comedy uh, tour with uh, uh, Andrew Andrist coming up in June, and uh, that's about it. Oh, great poster, by the way. That's yeah, it's poster. all right, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a little nervous, but that guy, uh, that kid's good. Brett Brock does all the uh, artwork. He's pretty good. So uh, yeah, focusing on that because. Uh, uh, when you when you do a tour with Andy, it takes both of you to split the work uh, 50-50. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just trying to do my my half of the work, preparation-wise. I just hope he shows up to the first gig. <laughs> Which is like... <laughs> where is the first gig? It's up in where the Pacific the... Northwest where he lives, right? Yeah, I had yeah. started it right near his house so that we have a chance. Couldn't make it easier. Uh, it, uh, it'll start in uh, uh, the comedy hotbed of Tulare, California. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm guessing that's you gotta, north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up by uh, Fresno. It's like if you wanted to be in Fresno, but you you didn't have enough money to live in Fresno, <laughs> you, you moved to Tulare. Or the skills. It's a little place called Barmageddon. <laughs> For real. Is that the actual name? That's yeah. a great name. Barmageddon. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we start there, and then we uh, we go uh, up through Santa Cruz and San Francisco and Oregon, and we end in, end in Montana a couple yeah. weeks later. Nice. Check it out. Check BrettEricksonComedy dot com for links. Are they up there now? No. Oh, okay. Some of them are. <laughs> some of them are. Some of the some of the dates just got finalized over the weekend, and uh, I have not been in any condition to do any sort of updating in the last couple of days. Yeah. 
I felt like it was a dumb question when I was saying it, and then you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I knew what you meant. It was, a, it was a slight dig. I get it. No, no, it wasn't a dig. I just, I wanted to know whether I, I should put a link. And if I put the link, then people are going to go, there's nothing up there, nothing dipshit. There. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, old. One job. <clears throat> Not much. Uh, I got to admit, though, that uh, picture, Greg, is, uh, I think it's now all over the world. I saw the Pope was holding you a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one was real. That wasn't Photoshop. Yeah. That actually happened. We had the Pope at the swap cast. <laughs> the old Pope, not the new yeah, Pope. Yeah, yeah. new Pope's they, busy. They know that. They know that. The old Pope, he's, he's touring around. <laughs> he's accessible to us. Yeah, I posted the, uh, you as the uh, second shooter on the uh, coming off the grassy knoll. And then someone in the comments uh, posted you uh, 9-11 coming out of the – falling out of the to- one of the I towers. Seen, I haven't seen that one. Uh, it just keeps going. Yeah, it, it just – it won't stop. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> so that's that's what I'm doing. I'm licking wounds <laughs> still. <clears throat> we had a good case up here. This is uh, – our continuing crime rate's been uh, – you know, it's unique enough where we keep making national news with it. There's a guy that was charged with murder a couple of days ago because uh, he went to shoot himself in the head and he did it and it went through his head and hit his girlfriend who was trying to stop him in the armpit, which apparently is where the vital organs are, not your head in this household. There's a major artery and, uh, or something under the under I the guess. Yeah, but yeah. But she... she she well, died. Can't he sweat. miraculously put a bullet through his head, and he survived. <laughs> Just to make his court date for second degree murder. Sounds like everything worked out. They were fighting. <laughs> and he just like another hole in the head. <laughs> Did it go through his cheek? Because I, I hear that's a pretty common mistake when you're trying to nope. shoot yourself. In this the head. went through his brain, and they said it's a miracle. It didn't uh, kill him. So miraculously, he gets to go to jail now. Yeah, but I bet his goddamn pro bono lawyer is going, yeah, it's a miracle, and I'm going to miss my kid's soccer. <laughs> he can catch up on soccer marmalade. What did I mean? You got to have intent. He didn't mean to. I mean, how codependent is this woman? Let him kill himself. <laughs> Always getting in his way. Yeah. yeah. Always story topping me. <laughs> can't, can't do anything right. Wait a minute. She's dead? Okay, I want to live now. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, what are you doing to find find a job? Oh. Is it becoming one of those things where you have to find one? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's incredible how. I know the answer how, to the first question oh, now. I actually have to work. Uh I've I've applied for for a job that's like a serious grown-up job, and other than that, I'm just doing a lot of freelance stuff. Uh, I'm shooting a friend's wedding on Saturday. So, you know, I got, I'm, I guess I'm working. Do you have to do all the editing for that, for those kind of gigs for the yeah. wedding? Isn't that yeah. tedious? Like, it, no, that's the only part I want to do because that's the only part that doesn't require me to leave the house. The rest of it's like, oh, I got to put pants on and walk around with a camera looking like a jerk. Well, you got that down. Yeah. <laughs> I like the editing part. <laughs> It seems like uh, you're employable, but you just don't want to work. Well, there's a, there's not a ton of uh, video jobs up here in Alaska. Weird. People have, yeah. people, have, people have seen it, so they're like, yeah, we don't need video Maybe if they put anymore. an airport in or build a road, you can leave someday. But until then, just hang on. But isn't every yeah. isn't every reality show on Discovery Channel about some sort of Alaskan family or police 68 yeah. percent yeah of all the reality shows are based in yeah Alaska. and then all the arrests by the alaska show people are in the lower 48 where they live <laughs> <laughs> you see the deadliest catch guy uh uh-uh. there's so many of them sig hansen sig yeah the midget yeah he was he beat up an uber and spit on the driver because he was drunk coming from a sons of norway convention or some <laughs> fucked up thing <laughs> <laughs> later he goes they came to the door he goes he clearly was intoxicated and he's like oh, i fucked up i should have done i'm sorry he's got video <laughs> do i get do i get residuals yeah and his son just got nailed for uh meth down in uh arizona the old stomping grounds of Phoenix. Really? Yeah. Hey, As I said, the deadliest catch is really about having an eight ball in a hotel room. 
I mean, who would have thought giving a bunch of fishermen uh, millions of dollars would have <laughs> ended badly? Well, we don't have an income tax, so they all live out of state and they don't pay a fucking dime up yeah. here. It's like crazy. Hey, I remember them always being somewhat of a problem when we had them in the bar. It was always something. And that SIG guy, yeah, he was he he'd been thrown out a couple times from Coots. Yeah. Yeah, they uh they like the attention, and then when they get it, they don't like the attention. Yeah, and it's like the weirdest thing. It's like the guy one time there was a guy who came in the bar, and he was like looked like Santa Claus, and it's it's December, and he was like a biker guy, and he goes, yeah, just leave me the fuck alone. And like he was throwing a fit. I go, you look like Santa, you weirdo. You're wearing a red <laughs> fucking outfit with a hat. <laughs> it's like, what do you think? And then when Becky was at, when Becky and Tish went down to uh uh uh. Nashville during the week of Elvis's birthday, there was a guy walking down the street dressed like Elvis with the girlfriend. They go, Can we get a picture with you? And the girlfriend's like, Can't you just leave him alone? I mean, what? Is-? And she goes, Just like fucking Elvis in Nashville, you retard. Can't you leave him alone? Yeah, rhinestone studded outfit, a guitar yeah. slung on his back. If we could just get some peace. <laughs> Skinzo guy can't wear a lavish costume in a crowd of people <laughs> without drawing attention to himself. In the hometown of Elvis. <laughs> Please re- respect my family's privacy in this difficult time. I just want to eat my <laughs> banana peanut butter sandwich in peace. <laughs> I think I know one thing, though, no, no, though. I'm not getting on any plane if somebody's wearing one of those Trump hats. <laughs> they seem to be the precursor to, to trouble on planes. What, the Make America Great <laughs> hat? Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. The guy, like, the other day got chucked off one coming back from Singapore. Yeah. And it was very funny because they were, like, yeah, all the, people from Singapore. And they were, but and, everybody uh, was chanting, lock him up, lock him <laughs> up. Yeah, I thought it was funny because you go, you're in Singapore. You can get that for spitting gum on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at graffiti, you can get arrested. I, uh, I, I found out that you just can't wear red hats anymore without getting three looks. I have a, uh, I have a red hat that's a Jolly Rancher racing hat that I got from, uh, mutual friend Tucker Campbell. Yeah. And I wear it when I go, uh, running, uh, w- once a year. Uh, the other day I went and, uh, I got, I was running through a neighborhood and I got a lot of people like slowing down to look at me and I got a lot of, uh, mean looks. It was in kind of a liberal area. They recognize so, the red, but they don't want to read on the on the front yeah, of the hat. They don't want to, well, it's a red hat with uh, with white letters on it, so yeah. immediately that you must know who that I'm. must say "Make America Great Again." But let's not look. I think we're further. all we're all starting to understand how the whole Buds and Crips things work. <laughs> like, what's he doing in our neighborhood? <laughs> we should shoot him. Not my fault. Red's my color. Well, if you if you only wear it when you uh, run. Then that is a that's that hat qualifies as brand new. <laughs> I'll never get I'll never get in shape yeah. because I can't wear it. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, uh, John, did you go to uh, Vegas yet? No, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm leaving Saturday night. We're going next week. And what? And what's what's the plan there? Uh, there's not, drinking. No, there's oh. no there's no like family thing, or there's, you're not going to because you've done bachelor parties and. And uh, no, we're just uh, Stephanie and I are just going. We're going down. We're gonna cut, spend a couple days in. Uh, LA hanging out with my family. Maybe uh maybe we'll hit up the uh maybe ten hours. Maybe yeah, maybe ten hours. Maybe we'll uh say hi to Brett Erickson. Do he's it. in the in the area. I'll be there. Uh, Wait, uh, last time he went down, I think he did the Pikey show. Mm-hmm. Or he visited you but are you still doing that show? No Pikey show. No Pike no Pikey show. Pikey show over. Oh. Last time we were down there, uh Matt Collins and I uh, stopped into the comedy store. Okay. Uh-huh. And, uh, that and place watch. is still happening. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's still open for business. That's still there. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the only plan. <laughs> I'm gonna go down and uh, do do nothing for a week, which is uh, not totally. not quite the opposite of what I've been doing lately. <laughs> say, so right so you're training for that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's smart. You don't want to jump right <laughs> no, into no. doing nothing. That's you how injuries. Get, yeah, yeah, exactly. Get yourself warmed up. That's a, a lot of people go on vacation after like working for a long time and it really throws off their, uh, you know, their whole plans of doing nothing for a week. Not me. <laughs> you should try to find day labor work in Vegas. Oh my God. Like <laughs> hand I- out those porno cards or do, <laughs> just do something. Just do something to go. Yeah. I, I've been working. The, the guys that slap them. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tap, 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 tap. And people take them and look at them and turn back and be like, is this you? Like, yep. Uh, <laughs> I control all aspects of the business. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I, we used to go to the desert party in May. Was it May, June? Yeah. Mother's Day week. It yeah. Was, yeah. It was always May. But I mean, going to Vegas in June, it's kind of the same, but I mean, we were in, we were miserable. I don't know. I, I guess it was a long time ago. Cause I don't remember it being like, as like right now, the thought of going to Vegas in the middle of, of June or, you know, at the beginning of June seems a lot. It seems like, like, like there's other times you could go where it would probably be cheaper. Like, it's like going to Hawaii now. It's like, why would you go to Hawaii now? Now's when it's actually nice in parts of the country. Yeah. yeah. Well, now's the only time I can afford to leave Alaska because it's cheaper to leave Alaska when it's nice out. Good. I've never known that. Yeah. Not to disagree true. with you, but uh, it's summertime prices, isn't it? Uh, JetBlue? You flying JetBlue? Yeah, of course I'm flying yeah. JetBlue. There you go. Buck 95. What? They pay you to leave. <laughs> you have to fly the plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Load your own baggage. Well, that's good, John. Well, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you, you, you're you actually getting out and being able to do something for your uh, summer of, of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the best summer ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking for a... Uh, we're going to be in L.A. for a couple of days, so I'm looking for suggestions of uh, things to do in L.A. Have you, uh, have you ever heard of this uh, restaurant called the um, Hard Rock Cafe? They have one of those. Uh, you can go in and you can see some uh, artifacts from uh, rock and roll oh. groups. Dude, Is it here to believe it or not? <laughs> yeah, there's a Ripley's Believe It or Not store. Uh, right by Tussauds? Tussauds? Yeah, right they got that. This is yeah. all kind of in the same general area, right? Oh, uh, right there. Yeah. Did you want to do something more local? Uh, yeah, I was hoping for something Scientology related. <laughs> oh, oh, they're they're all luck. Scientology related. Uh, I would work my way up from the Baha'i faith if I a were. A couple you. years ago, Stephanie and I were uh, in LA. We were waiting for a show at UCB Theater on Franklin, and that's right near the uh, Scientology Celebrity Center. So we just walked in, and uh, we didn't really know what to do. So we just walked around for a while. Uh, and then we just like walked around through rooms and finally somebody asked us what we were doing and <laughs> like, we're allowed to just snoop around the celebrity center. Hey, you in the red hat. Yeah. So that's, we were really close to becoming uh, Tom Cruise's slaves on that trip. That would have been fun. That seems like that might be an issue. Like they might disappear you or something. Yeah. yeah. I, Leah Remini will save you. Yeah. <laughs> So I might go to the uh, Museum of uh, Psychology. I think that's the other, another Scientology place. Oh, one thing you shouldn't do, John, is don't get uh, nachos. I don't can't. Get, I promise. I'm definitely going to get nachos. Don't get truck stop nachos because uh, they've got a death count now. A what? What? The, the Sacramento the truck stop was selling nachos and the cheese and Dorito bag and Apparently nine people are sick. One's in a coma. One guy just died. Thirty-seven year old guy. It's it's extreme botulism. They don't know where it came from. I assume it might have to do something with that minimum wage worker you got running the nacho machine. Yeah, <laughs> I'd take well, a look at that. I'd take a look at that cheese first. That napalm cheese. Yeah, <laughs> I mean botulism. That's it all comes from a can. Well, the company that makes this fucking shit cheese, they're like all defensive. They're like, we checked everything. It's fine. They go, it's got a year <laughs> shelf life. So, Well, it all checks out here. Let's go over to the nacho yeah. guys or the chip guys. <laughs> yeah, no, they, he, he answered right. He answered right. <laughs> it's usually, I guess it's usually caused by uh, home canning your food. So maybe this was some uh, organic rustic style nacho cheese they bought at a uh, farmer's market. Yeah, I just I just didn't understand. I was just like, uh, I would expect to get botulism from that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would feel offended if I didn't. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it and keep eating nachos. I'm not gonna let this scare me. I'm with you, John. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. if you stop, the botulism wins. Yeah, you can't That's let right. the botulism win. It is crazy though. So I, uh, we do have a tour coming up in uh, June. Doug is going to the East Coast. It looks like we're going to be gone during the uh, Killer Termites Day, Becker. Uh oh, July third. So you're going to have to represent. All right, I already when got are, a plan. When are you going to be here? We get it on uh, what of the second Th- Sunday. Yeah, I think it's July second. Yeah. Um, yeah. Until uh, we leave on ten days. So okay. whatever that be, uh, Thursday. All right. 
or no, next th- the Thursday after. Ten days were there, so I think we're there the second to the twelfth. That would be ten days. Yeah, the, uh, we got to go to that Frida. We got to go to Frida. Elfrida. Elfrida. Oh no, the, no, no, the, no, 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 no! Uh, the uh, Frida, the uh, the art exhibit in two. Yeah, the art exhibit. Yeah. 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 Uh, At the- there's a little town out here called Elfrida. That's where I get my uh, implant done. Oh yeah, we're not going to yeah, the yeah. implant place. Well, we're yeah, going to the. That's a different place. kind of day. Is <laughs> <laughs> my friend the Pancho skin flap? <laughs> <laughs> you will have baseball. Gross. Baseball is coming back. So the Saguaros, the Tucson Saguaros, will be playing that week on the fourth. Uh, I don't. Whatever that Sunday is. Okay. Because uh, they, they do oh, home games there. Yeah. And I know they're coming back because they asked for if the Killer Termites want to sponsor again. The uh, with a banner out in in the uh, in the home run fence. Sweet. I None of that surprises me. What surprises me is that they can get anyone to umpire that game. <laughs> there is no way I would do it. There's not enough money. No, no way. Now, what's the problem what? with umpiring that umpiring the uh, the Sunday game at the uh, Bisbee or at the Warren Ballpark here in Bisbee? What's the problem with yeah, it? Yeah. What's the problem? That uh, it would be impossible to uh, uh, make people happy that day. Well, no. It, well, no. All you got to do is let people have fun. <laughs> Stop yelling. You can't use audible sound. Blah, 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 blah. I used a megaphone by mistake. It's just, uh, it's a tough gig. It's yeah. a tough gig. It's like, you, you know, they say in, in comedy, Late Show Friday is the toughest gig. But in umpiring, the Sunday afternoon, July 3rd, Warren Ballpark doubleheader <laughs> is the late, late, late show Friday. <laughs> It's a tough crowd. It's a tough crowd. <laughs> On Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't think that they that they kind of make it hard on themselves, the umpire? He didn't do himself any favors. Yeah. But had it been the most uh, uh, compliant and uh, fun-loving umpire that's ever umpired, he still would have been taking it hard in the ass for yeah. 18 innings. <laughs> <laughs> I that's point. Uh, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a tough. I, I it's it. a tough. It's a tough shift to fill However if you're you running the umpire it. association. Yeah. And Brett, yeah, you are, Brett, you are a uh, you are a referee, right? I'm, you are a certified. I, I am certified sports ref. I am a sports referee. So how? Yeah, would you, but being a baseball umpire is so worse. I mean, it, it's not like you have a great view of the game. You're scrouched down behind a guy. <laughs> it's like watching prison from behind. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what advice would you give the umpire officiating on Kill the Termites Day here in Bisbee? Uh, call in sick. <laughs> don't do it. Don't Just don't do it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Look at your schedule in advance. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Or, or just uh, throw the game in favor of the Cigueros immediately. Every pitch they throw is a strike. Yeah. Every... Everybody's safe, you know. I mean, just throw the game. I well, mean, my, still I might not help. am I. I'm unemployed, and I'm ready to take on this challenge. If no umpire steps up, I will. Uh, I will ump this game. John, you and will I, last through the national <laughs> anthem. <laughs> I I have uh, I refereed a, a wrestling match once, and uh, it You're, ended in a fist fight. <laughs> so I don't put that on my your only resume. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only experience. Uh, so. How did you? I'm a what? very, I'm a, I'm a lenient. I'm a very lenient ref. I I let everything go. Once so again, I don't say him. this in the interview. What? These are the, these are. I guess I'm I'm figuring out you're just not good at reading situations <laughs> or officiating. I say let the boys play. That's what I say. <laughs> Even when a wrestling match turns into fisticuffs. Yeah. Well, the It'll real tri- the real tricky part when it gets to that point is scoring it. <laughs> you just start giving people escapes. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think you know how wrestling works. No, I, two I points. definitely did. Two points I thought I knew escape. the rules a lot better than I actually did. So <laughs> it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, I know that song, and then like a, a verse comes up, and you're like, I don't know this at all. <laughs> did you wrestle, John, in high school? I did, but I didn't really pay attention. <laughs> I, I lived in a small town and just wanted to travel somewhere with a movie theater. So wrestling worked out pretty well. That is a low fucking bar. Yeah. 
How does, wait, how does being on the wrestling team help you see movies? Well, I grew up in a small town with no movie theater, so we had to travel to tournaments to towns with movie theaters. And then you'd skip the wrestling match and go to the movies? Yeah, I threw I, I threw a couple <laughs> matches so I could go catch a movie <laughs> game. <laughs> it's a double header. <laughs> yeah. All right. His biggest problem was he got back on the bus to go back to that school. Yeah. He should have yeah. just stayed and worked at the movie theater. <laughs> Probably. Is that a got into film? <laughs> well, you know, A, I like I like wearing a uh, a Leo. And uh, my singlet style was pretty good. And I like movies. So I got the best of both worlds. Those shoes are very slimming. I will admit that. <laughs> oh, the Freddie Mercury kicks? Yeah, yeah those yeah. are so. They're very low profile. They're great for your uh, for your arches. Well, I, I think you've you've got a couple of things here that uh, look good to prospective uh, employers, but there's there's really there's nothing that's really going to help you. I think that I've heard so far. <laughs> I mean, it looks good that you're not that th- that you've got something to write down, but you should really try and like push those off the list by having something else to put on the list. You know what I mean, <laughs> John? When's the last time you shaved your beard off? Uh, like completely. Well, yeah, next to completely El Dante. Not that long ago, because I got a new I got a new beard trimmer, and uh, I don't know how the guard works, and so I accidentally shaved my beard off a couple months ago. <laughs> so this doesn't help your mi- millennial crowd uh, cred. Did you just have a portion of it that was shaved off? You could have just well, once you do a little bit of it, you go all the way. You can't like <laughs> you could do the half. The half is actually cool. You put ladies' makeup on one side of your face, and the other half you turn, you got a beard. <laughs> Freaks Glenn about or Glenda. The- yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to maximize my uh, ability to get free drinks at the bar. So whatever people want. They want a pretty lady or they want a, a rugged young man. I've yeah. got them both covered. I-, I cannot believe you're not working with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sound like a guy who can commit, John. Yeah. Commitment's not not the issue. Don't worry, guys. I'll find I'll find something. No, you- yeah. Uh, I apparently, it's right. going to make it easier to sell uh, jams and jellies and uh, other food products at at uh, Saturday market. So, oh, really? How's that? They got rid of all the laws. Apparently, because I think the permit now is you have to have a uh, professional kitchen. So you have to have a kitchen that's been inspected by the state to. Uh, to sell something at a farmer's market. Yeah, because that could lead to botulism if you didn't. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, come to my nacho stand. I'll prove you wrong. John, uh, John, what are you gonna what are you gonna sell at the market at the farmer's market? Uh, maybe hot sauce. Maybe I'll do some hot sauce. Are we still roundtabling this? Or it, it sounded like you had a plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you seem a little unsure of a sudden, like you're a wrestling well, coach. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure because I could. You know, I'm a man of many talents. I can make a lot of things, but hot sauce seems seems like my favorite. And and you say they 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 are insisting that you have a commercial kitchen to be able to make hot sauce. Currently, but they might change the rules. You're still in. When Anchorage, are they going to do it? It's already summer. The Saturday market's going on. Yeah. So what? You can't. Are they going to change it during the season so I could jump in and compete with all the people that have kitchens? Yeah, probably. Is, all right. I think you, once again, I don't think you read the entire brochure. <laughs> I mean, hot sauce I, is basically vinegar and salt and some kind of a chili don't, oil. No, no, don't, don't blow the secret a, recipe. You know, recipe. Anyone can do it Jesus. then. He's trying I'm, to sell this I'm stuff. I'm bleeping that out. I'm bleeping that <laughs> out. My competitors could be listening right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I urge you to go back and maybe reread. <laughs> The, the four rules to farmer's market and three of them have to do with parking. You, sh- you should just, uh, you should just, uh, take a, a comedy act on the road and sell hot sauce afterwards. Yeah. Like my comedian friend Dave Yates, who sells ha ha hot sauce after his shows instead of t-shirts. Oh. Or <laughs> no lie. That, that I feel is... like I have better luck not doing the comedy part. And just <laughs> so does Dave. Have you been on, have you, have you been on tour with him? No, no, I haven't. But he's uh, he is a kid from Central Illinois that I I've known. He's out in L.A. now. He's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, he sells hot sauce. That's his. Uh, no, I think item. that's funny because I, I assume he's got a lot of Mexican openers. 
<laughs> That's where he made his mistake. He needs to get on the Latin Kings of Comedy yeah. tour. <laughs> so does he? Does he actually? Or the Amway Comedy tour. <laughs> does he actually manufacture he the makes, hot sauce? Yeah. yeah. Or oh, no, he he mixes he ma- the. He makes the it. Pot? It's his own recipe, and he bottles it. He's got his own labels. Now, whether or not any of this has been inspected by anybody, I have no idea. I doubt it. I figure the easiest way would be to just go buy like a bunch of hot sauce bottles, like like hot sauce, and just get like an off brand at like Smart and Final or Cash and Carry or one of these like like. Just put your own label over it, and then buy a fucking sticker machine and put (laughs) just put that on there. Way to ruin Matt's new wine. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Matt. I forgot what you talked about that. (laughs) I don't know how he sells it so cheap. (laughs) (laughs) You hate this. So like right now we know if you read the news at all or you're forced into it, uh, Venezuela is starving to death. And meanwhile, they recalled like, Eight billion hot dogs because there might be metal shavings in it. <laughs> Nathan's and another brand, and I'm just like, give them the Venezuela. I bet they won't complain about it. There's probably a way to, to get that. Just uh, hook them up with the uh, the metal detector people. Come on, <laughs> let's 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 think about this. There's ways around all this, right? And that and you I, you know what? I bet you those Nathan hot dogs were made in a commercial kitchen. People who eat hot dogs don't care if there's metal in them. <laughs> That was my point. The metal was the least dangerous thing in a hot dog. It's yeah. the fourth thing in yeah. the ingredient list. It's yeah. on there. <laughs> you got blood in your shit. It's not from the hot dog. Well, you don't have to take those iron pills. <laughs> but yeah, you know how they got those things for wine where you put a magnet around the neck and you fucking pour it. Yeah, oh, just put on. it over your fucking hot dogs. Yeah. Just... You, you, wait, you wait, put the wait. magnet around the neck of wine? Yeah, or put put glue, hot glue magnets to the back of your molars, and when you eat the hot dog, the metal will just get pulled out before it ever goes down your hole. You can't bite down all the way, but big deal. You just need to mash it up enough. Greg, if you're trying to win a hot dog eating competition, you don't want to bite down all the way. Oh, that's you just it. Open velvet. This is Kobayashi's uh, revenge on Nathan's. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't want anyone to be able to actually be able to swallow the hot dogs. He knows which packs aren't tainted. <laughs> <laughs> Finally going to be back in. <laughs> Jeez, what a great episode. What a <laughs> classic episode. Uh, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, every time you come on, we are firing on all cylinders. <laughs> uh, but surprisingly, people only ask for Chad Shank to come back, not Brett Erickson. That's, I don't know why. That's weird. <laughs> wow. Not while he's here. <laughs> uh I'm uh are you guys gonna rewatch some James Bond tonight now that Roger Moore died? Wait, what? Roger Moore Spoiler. died. Roger Moore died. Oh man. Wow. More is less. How do you yes. guys not know this stuff? This, he was these only, are things he that was, pop up all the time. He was only eighty nine years old. Yeah. What a surprise. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's so low on the uh on the uh the celebrity death pool. It's another one of those. It's another one of those deaths that it's like, oh man, he wasn't dead yet. Yeah. Wow. Nice job. Yeah, but he. Yeah, come on. He had money penny working on his side. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, assume- Roger, Moore, Roger Moore dying. That's one of those ones where you can tell all of the uh, like New York Times watch, but they always had the obituary mm-hmm. ready to go. Yeah. Because like an hour after he died, they had like a twenty thousand word obituary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Going through his entire life. Well, I'm sure that 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 pays off a lot. Yeah. Not for uh, Gene Hackman. It keeps coming out that he's dead. <laughs> oh, I guarantee they Walsh's fucking fault. just, yeah. they kept updating that goddamn, uh, when, what's that, George Burns. They were just like, ah, fuck. All right. Add another line. Yeah. If he doesn't die pretty soon, <laughs> we're not going to have any room left in this <laughs> floppy disk. <laughs> Rita Morano. Remember, remember Rita Morano? Rita Morano. Rita, Rita Marino. Oh, yeah. Did you see she's 85? That was uh, that was uh, hey you guys, uh, yeah, I back, know, right? No, <laughs> Puerto start- Ricans don't last that long. This Come is crazy. She no, was in uh, West, West Side. Uh, West, Side <laughs> West Side Story. Yeah, West Side Story. Yeah, yes. West Side Story. Yeah, she's she's in I the, mean, new, uh, just, the, the new the uh, new Netflix One Day at a Time, starring the uh, Latinos. Exactly. All of them. I'm going. I know they're. 
85 year olds are getting work. No wonder oh, all the young kids are fucking crazy. No wonder John can't get that wrestling job. Yeah. Uh, Rita Moreno took your job, John. Yep, I was up for that role as the uh, <laughs> Spanish grandma. <laughs> can't catch a break. Did you see the one with the what's the one with the guy from Law and Order, Jane Fonda? Uh, what is it? Where the the husbands are gay, they're lawyers. Frankie and, and Johnny. And the, Frankie and Johnny. What, but it's just yeah. Law and Was Order it? is such a huge series. Sam Watterson. <laughs> is it Sam Watterson? Yeah, and then uh, and uh, 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 Sheen, Martin Sheen, Martin Sheen, Sam Watterson. Uh, they're all famous. Anyway, the point is, they go. You need to hurry up production. We're old. <laughs> like they want to get more serious out, and the studios are like, "Hang hey, on, wait, we'll get this." But it's such a bizarre show. I mean, I sit and watch it and go, uh, "Who is this for?" <laughs> they're so old that like they're so old that they want to like double production they want to work double shifts yeah exactly they want to work yeah they want to work uh, really china sucks. hours yeah yeah they want to work for apple but uh <laughs> <laughs> i just thought it was really weird because it's a show it's got such weird content where you go okay it's fine i get the premise everything it's kind of funny but at the same time you're going this is a your generation didn't know Liberace was gay for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this for? And they were offended when they found out. Yeah, he's just flamboyant. <laughs> he loves his mother. Every time a man wears a nice suit, you think he's gay. These are all things I heard grown ups say when I was young about Liberace. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, and I just noticed last week standing in line at the uh, at the Safeway. The, Liberace was on like a People fucking magazine or something last week. Last week. Well, yeah, here in Are you Disney. sure it wasn't? That well, might have I mean, been Richard Simmons. I assume that it's, <laughs> it might have been Richard Simmons. It's this, it was not Richard Simmons. <laughs> Richard Simmons dead. Liberace. But are we still trying to uncover the secrets of, of Liberace? What's left? I mean, the the the, the title was like. The, the other side of Liberace. <laughs> but it, it the like, really uh, butch side. What, what other side? How is, is this a multifaceted diamond? <laughs> he, uh, sure. he, was, he was a lumberjack. Uh, <laughs> yeah. very, lots of flannel, big beard, just cutting down trees in the, in the Tongass forest. Yeah, he was a freelance he logger. Never knew. <laughs> I, I heard he was a, a, a wrestling uh, umpire or whatever <laughs> umpire. they are. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Of fire. <laughs> fire. That's a yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight red. <laughs> to the showers. To the showers. Mystery <laughs> games. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, yeah, the world amazes me. Oh, do you see in Canada, they uh, fucking a radio station apologized for playing, uh, what they play, Lou Reed's Walk of the Wild Side because it's insensitive to transgenders. No, wait a minute. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Walk on the wild side from the seventies, right? Or is it? Yeah. Late? Yeah. In Canada, radio station apologizes for playing that song because they didn't realize There's at one the time. Line in it. Why wouldn't they just not play the song? Well, they oh, asked, someone called and complained. It, but it's it's not offensive. I know, but it's not offensive. And the the government announced that they were saying we're sorry we we played the song. I go, how is it offensive? It says he switches the. Now he's a she yeah. and uh, walking along. They're not offended by the fact that black girls go, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> they don't get a leading role. <laughs> but it's Canada. They don't have a lot. Well, uh, Brett Erickson has a history in, uh, in radio and, uh, and I worked in radio for a little bit too. And, uh, I always felt like the, the only time any of these things ever mattered was if someone at the radio station decided to make it matter. Like people would call up and they'd say something and you'd just say, fuck it. What's going mm-hmm. on? Our, our live audience is enjoying something else other than this program. Oh, hold on. A lot I think more it's another this. picture. Yeah, yeah. It's another uh, cannonball shaley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is it not- <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, I think, number one right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's, good. Uh, it's me <laughs> doing a cannonball over, over the falls at Niagara. <laughs> I think I got to yeah. put a coffee table book together. There's, yeah, enough, no. there's enough good yeah. ones, I think. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I like that one. That was good. All right. I, what about it? I excuse the outburst. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this one. This oh, is this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> Brett, Brett, what are you? Uh, what are you looking at there? <laughs> this is a. Uh, uh, the uh, the guy jumping out of the uh, one of the towers on nine eleven, committing suicide with cannonball Shaley coming in right, by, coming See, in hot right behind him. This is this is the problem. This is the problem when you don't understand aerodynamics and you're jumping out of a building. It'll be the it'll be the death of you. It'll be the death of you. You know how many lives we could have saved if we had a PSA about tucking those knees up to your chin. <laughs> yep. All right. Never forget. <laughs> uh, that one is uh, uh, Amy Jones. Amy Jones. Okay. On Facebook, right on. Amy Jones came through with that one. So give credit where credit's due. All right. Well, we'll put some links up and uh, have that up there. Yeah, I think you should definitely make a calendar immediately. <laughs> <laughs> where would we put that? Uh, <laughs> Forget it. Save the Kennedy one for November. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already got September. Yeah, right we got now. September and November handled. <laughs> oh, God. All right, you've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker sitting on a bus in Anchorage, Alaska. I am John Norris uh, looking for any freelance wrestling umpire opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> This is Greg Shaley with Brett Erickson in Bisbee, Arizona, keeping my knees right under my chin. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome. I saved another podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Save! You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus. Produced and engineered in Bisbee, Arizona by Shaley. (laughs) 